So the concept I want to get into here really kind of exists somewhere around the intersection of three separate points. I want to go through those one at a time. Point number one, chromatic parallelism is cool. So if you're an advanced player, I'd say there's probably a pretty good chance that you've got experience playing in more modern styles, and especially in modern styles, chromatic parallelism uh, is a pretty big deal. I'm talking about this kind of thing. All right, let's put that to the side for a second, and let's talk about point number two. This is a cool sound. Okay, of course, that's my opinion, and I want to talk more about that in a second. Uh, but first, let's talk about uh, what it is we're looking at here. This is a voicing for a dominant 7 sharp 9 chord. In this case, of course, C7 sharp 9. We have the root, 5th, 3rd, flat 7, and sharp 9. I think this shape has some really interesting qualities. For one thing, um, it has a very open spacing to it. I think that that helps to, um, uh, to give it a really kind of clear sound to my ears. Uh, it's fairly easy for me to pick up the individual notes, uh, the top note especially, like if I move it around, uh, it's easy for my ear to find the top note. Bum, 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 and so on. Secondly, while it is open and clear, it also has a certain sort of gritty dissonance that I really like. I think that's largely due to the major seventh interval between the third here and the sharp nine in the next highest octave. All right, so now we'll put that point aside and we'll come to point number three. Many melodies end with mi, re, do or some variation. Uh, some people like using solfege, some people like using numbers. I'm going to go back and forth in this video. So this may or may not have ever uh, occurred to you, but I think it's a pretty neat point. Uh, to be clear, what I'm talking about is like if I'm in the key of C, uh, I could have a melody that ends with 3, 2, 1, Mi, Re, Do. Or it might end with some variation such as Re, Mi, Do. Or it might be Mi, Mi, Re, Do, 3, 3, 2, 1, and so on. It's kind of surprising how many melodies end that way. If you look for it, there's a good chance you'll find it. All right, so now let's take these three points. Parallelism is cool, this is cool, and many melodies end on mi, re, do, or some variation. And let's, let's uh, come up with a technique that kind of draws from those. Here goes. You can wrap up a melody by using the dominant 7 sharp 9 shape when the melody is on mi and re. And that's it. So let's check out a couple of examples. Let's say we're in the key of C and we have a melody that finishes with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Okay, you might play something like this. It's very nice, nothing wrong with that. But now uh, I'll use this technique and I get this. How cool is that? Okay, so what just happened here? Well, uh, the first time around I had like a D minor 11 to uh, more or less G7 and then C6. Nothing wrong with that. The second time around, though, uh, I did my, G minor, my D minor 11. And then when the melody got to me, I used the technique. Now the thinking becomes, what dominant 7 sharp 9 chord shape has E as its top note? The answer ends up being D flat 7 sharp 9. So we have D flat, or we have root, 5th, 3rd, flat 7, sharp 9. So when the melody is on E, I'm using D flat 7 sharp 9. Then when the melody went to Re, I asked uh, the same question. What uh, dominant 7 sharp 9 chord shape has D as its top note? The answer ends up being B7 sharp 9. Root, 5th, 3rd, flat 7, sharp 9. So we have D flat 7 sharp 9 for when the melody is on E, and then B7 sharp 9 when the melody is on D. So once more, that's All right, let's try another one. What if your melody ended with La, Do, Re, Mi, Do? Or six, one, two, three, one. So this time, instead of ending with uh, Mi, Re, Do, we're ending with Re, Mi, Do. All right, you might play something like this. Which is nice. And then I'll use the technique. Yeah. I think that if you use this technique along with some other, you know, advanced voicings, neat chord changes and so forth, you can get a really, really neat sound. Something like...
Don't forget to download the PDF for this lesson.